I think that brings us to bum, bum. <gasps> the wrestling minute. Wrestling bro, minute. wrestling, bro, is about like it was in the 1990s when Vinny Russo was doing all this swerve booking, bro. It's getting pretty crazy. I'm not going to do that accent the whole time, but I just wanted <laughs> people to know why I'd say wrestling because only a real uh, a real wrestling nerd like me would even understand whose voice I'm doing there. But guys, we have some notes. Former UFC legend and the newest WWE superstar, Charles Montgomery Punk. Uh, I, oh, I was hoping to get a spit take out of Zach for that one. <laughs> <laughs> MMA Hall of Famer CM Punk is back <laughs> in the WWE, uh, and he is on Raw probably right now. In fact, uh, the first thing I'll do after this is check YouTube to see if there is a clip because he has to decide if he's going to Raw or SmackDown. Now, Zach, you were in the comment section the last time we talked about this. I don't know if if this guy was in your window or not. So were you familiar at all with CM Punk in the WWE in the late 2000s, early 2010? No, no. I Because um, I got into it late, if I'm being honest. I, I mean, I watched a little bit when I was younger, you know, with my cousins, but I, I didn't watch it until until Gary started making me watch it with him. He's like, hey, sit down with me. We're, we're watching wrestling. It's, it's, uh, <laughs> it's, it's going to be great. It's going to be good for you. Trust me. Like, okay, let's do it. And I, I mean, I loved it. Now, don't ask me names because obviously I can't pronounce names. You guys already saw that earlier today. <laughs> but uh, if you show me a picture, like, oh, I remember that guy. Yes, he was awesome. Yeah, cool. <laughs> but well, uh, yeah. You might remember uh, this, well, this gal's father. So, Charlotte Flair, legendary. Uh, yes. Uh, daughter of the. Equally legendary in the ring wise, Ric Flair. By the way, they've they've made that a point. They've get, Charlotte's won the title like fifteen times, so they're 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 making sure they they keep the name. She got injured. Uh, a lot of people talk about how wrestling is fake and all of this stuff. Well, she suffered a very real knee injury on. I guess you would call it a botched superplex. You guys know what that is when they both oh, climb yeah. up to the top rope, and. Uh, so her body, instead of going straight from the corner into the center of the ring, she went to the left, and her knee actually got caught on the top rope, uh, oh. causing them to uh, essentially work to a different finish. And you could you could tell because when they do these things, these these athletes uh, more power to them. Like, could you imagine tearing your ACL or both quads, and then being like, <laughs> "I'm going to stand on this long enough for you to roll me up and get a three count"? Like, I'm. I'm still. I still have to finish the scene. Like I can't do it the way we initially wrote it, but we're in the ring and someone has to count to three. So now I've got to figure out a way for you to pin me that mm -hmm. you know uh, doesn't give the game away, so to speak. So uh, we wish her a speedy recovery. I'm not sure the full extent to the injury, but um, always, always a bummer. Also, should be noted, Randy Orton was gone for almost two whole years. Uh, but, you know these guys. And gals just really bust their ass. I, I do love the sport of wrestling. And to tie this back into the UFC a bit, did you guys see how Brock Lesnar's daughter is oh, a, what is it, a shot, shot put, put champion? Shot put champion. Shot put champion. champion yep. The apple didn't far fall from that tree. His. I thought it was a joke. I thought I thought I was like, when did Brock get long hair? You're I'll like be this honest, AI. Just... This AI already <laughs> ridiculous, dude. That only kind of looks like Brock. Kinda, it's like exactly him. <laughs> the uh, one of my buddies from Alabama goes to Colorado State. I need to hit him up and see if like he's seen her around or whatever. Because like you can, sure. she sticks out, right? Like it's it's Brock Lesnar's daughter who looks like his clone. Yeah, yeah, when she's suplexing people through tables at the at the frat party, I bet they're like, "Oh yeah, <laughs> that's Lesnar." Uh, don't piss her off, <laughs> <laughs> dude. I'm telling you, let her win in beer pong. It's not worth <laughs> yeah. it. it's not worth your pride. No. So when that when that photo went viral, I saw a very interesting tweet, and it had uh, Frank Mir's daughter as well. Uh, I believe she is a she's a college athlete as well. So then. Uh, the tweet was essentially, hey, Dana, 
you know, <laughs> come book this fight right now. So uh, maybe we'll have that uh, light, light wrestling link there. But the other thing I wanted to talk about that is wrestling related and UFC related is Endeavor, a uh, company that uh, UFC and the WWE are a part of now, have announced they're doing a streaming service with tna wrestling bro see you didn't think the vince russo thing was going to come full circle but uh i i was practicing I was ready this? for this oh yeah yeah i, I even <laughs> took notes and everything so tna which technically stands for total non-stop action but as vince russo has come to admit it really thinks what you think it means right guys when i say tna it's a little old maybe maybe you're Maybe your dad said it, but uh, we're well past the three-minute mark, so I'll just say it. <laughs> TNA was meant to be a wink-wink, tits-and-ass wrestling. So after uh, after years of being tits-and-ass wrestling, they switched <laughs> from Impact uh, because the brand had just been irreparably damaged, and then Impact got flatter than a plate full of piss, as Jim Cornette would say. This is what happens when the wrestling minute, folks. i got to do my wrestling uh, gimmicks here. And so... Impact Wrestling now has rebranded as TNA, and Endeavor has partnered with them to do a streaming service, TNA+. Plus. Now, I know probably, I mean, Wade might be the only one who will know. TNA was kind of where WCW went after it died, you know? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yep. That's where the legend of Perk Angle exists, uh, was created. Mm. So uh, poor Kurt with his fourth broken neck was all yeah. uh, painkiller. We heard now. all about that one in the podcast. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Great episode of Joe Rogan talking about uh, Kurt Angle. But yeah, so TNA is back. I, I think it's going to be a great year for wrestling. They have uh, that guy, Will Ospreay, that you guys won't know. But my, my fellow Marks know that's a big name from Japan, an English wrestler. So big things coming here pretty soon man i might have to start talking about wrestlers who uh, we didn't grow up watching 30 years ago so oh that's nice. start doing my uh my my research now okay you know get me get me into wrestling well, yeah there we go baby come on over i've got peacock i think isn't peacock mm -hmm. the one that's got all of the uh wwe stuff that's on? where that's where the uh paper well now they don't call them pay-per-views over on wwe because you can just watch it on peacock so they're called premium live events which is almost as good as a pay-per-view except you get a bunch of fucking commercials throughout it so that's all <laughs> gross. who would do that vince mcmahon vincent kennedy mcmahon god damn pal you see that ad you see that credit bank credit card ad oh that's the good shit right there yeah so. sounds good, that's good <laughs> so there we have it folks be on the lookout for another installment of the Wrestling Minute where we will maybe talk about the upcoming Royal Rumble, something that I think even the most casual of wrestling fans is familiar with. Oh, yeah. It's when all of the retired guys come back for a quick payday. Uh, it's always a, a great little blast of nostalgia right to the veins. But actually, you know what? I have one final thing for you guys on the Wrestling Minute. I forgot to talk about this, but it's, it goes back to a former episode. We talked about Charlotte Flair, the legend, Ric Flair, Woo! Energy drink. I don't know if we talked about the promo that he cut on AEW television in which he said any uh, women, which is something he did in the 70s, by the way. Not that I'm excusing it, but it's just like an old man going back into character, except his character was to say all the 18 to 28 year old women, no husbands, no boyfriends, meet me in my hotel room. Uh, to which point, uh, if those of you who don't know, Ric Flair has also had some SA allegations levied against him. Check out the dark side of the ring, the plane ride from hell. If you don't know what I'm talking about, those of you who have been in high school football locker rooms, it's called the helicopter. You're familiar with it. I know you are. Don't fucking tell me you're not. Uh, so, yeah, Ric Flair pulled a helicopter on a plane, and he uh, – uh. <laughs> only mistakes as old men always have the best takes. So, now – with that knowledge, guys, Ric Flair on uh, cable television said the 70-year-old man uh, dressed like uh. wallpaper from the 70s uh, said uh, all the young women that were single should meet him at his hotel room, to which the AEW faithful kind of put owner Tony Khan on blast saying, you know, how are you paying this guy? And check this. This is the funny part. Tony Khan's defense was, guys, I'm not paying Ric Flair. Ric Flair at Woo Energy paid us 
to be a sponsor on our pro. So that was the way he was like, guys. Wow. I'm not paying him anything. He's paying me to be on TV. So it's perfectly <laughs> fine. So, yeah, uh, that's uh, that's all right. What up, Poland Spring? The helicopter sounds legal. Oh, God, Poland. I didn't know you were here. I wouldn't have said that. Oh, God. Oh, at least there won't be any poop jokes. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> See, smart. Only mistakes. There we have it, folks. Wrestling Minute. Thank you, as always, for entertaining me.